Studio Tone, um, we started recording here maybe four years ago. Um, the, the mess has just accumulated more and more because I would like to clean it one day, but then the magic might be lost. I get a lot of my equipment inherited or uh, uh, stolen. Someone leaves something here, they don't get it back, then it's mine forever. Well, I'd say the first bit of music gear I got could have been the recorder. You know, everyone does recorder in primary school, don't they? I'd say that could have been the first bit of music gear I got. Mm -hmm. I actually play the bass, check this out. Oh, I mean that and you know, whatever, whatever's lying around. Try it with that instead. The first bit of music gear I got was a Yamaha student model trombone. Um, I've since uh, upgraded to a professional model. Uh, it's the YSL697Z, um, which is a small bore. It's a dual bore. It's a five, uh, 494 mm -hmm. to, sorry, 489 to 494 dual bore. Oh, uh, I nice Yamaha counterweight at the top. I'm actually using a Bark 6.5 uh, AL mouthpiece. Was it? Was it? I was originally on a Bark 7C, but I found that the deeper cup kind of helped with that middle bottom register, really helped it to pop and respond, which is actually interesting using kind of a medium size kind of mouthpiece on a small bore trombone. I really think that I'm bucking the trend and look, to be honest, whatever works for you at the end of the day. The specs of your trombone are really integral, I'd say. I was in a band called Comb Over, and we were like a de uh, like grindcore death metal band with horn players. And I was going to invite Peach to join that band, but I saw his trombone. I was still going through the mouthpiece phase. I and still and the mouthpiece was just not quite on par with what I wanted for we, the band. I, I, it, yeah, and you could have joined Comb Over. You could have been, played, we like been there from the start. Who knows what yeah. we'd be now? Maybe, maybe we'd be here talking about Comb Over now instead. In the studio, my favourite bit of gear to play with, uh, it's a really hard question to answer because there's so much gear in here, I don't know if half of it works. Like this headphone splitter here. Yeah. This is my favourite piece of gear or my favourite thing to play with. And then it could just not work because it's like, it belongs to my dad and it's from the 80s. Although... I you, know what's, you know what's beautiful about trombone mouthpieces? They always work. You never, because there's no... There's yeah, no, right. There's no lead, there's no electronics. You don't it's have just to like, get them fixed. If your face works... Yep. It works. Fucking beautiful. I, I'll go with the Suarez um, electric fiddle. I, I'm not sure what the Suarez is doing here. I think it's from Cuba. Yeah, it's just got no strings on it. No one really uses it. But for some reason in my recording studio, I do have a Suarez electric fiddle. One day, maybe I'll learn to play it. But it's quite hard to learn to play the violin this late in, in your life. I think the Suzuki method is well and truly past me by. So the first piece of gear I, I want to talk about is, is this my trombone mouthpiece? It's a Bark 6.5 AL. Now that's right down the middle in between small and larger mouthpieces. So the 6.5 determines the width of the rim and the AL is talking about the cup size here, which is the depth here. Obviously a deeper cup mm. allows you to push more air through, I never the, knew that. through the trombone, therefore make a fuller, richer, warmer sound. And uh, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's a bit tarnished. It's been around for a little while, but it's, it's stuck with me over the years. I guess the feeling that I get when I play trombone is really the physical feeling of the mouthpiece on my face and that buzz really like, you know, with it, you just feel that buzz and you're in the zone. It's like, that's the, that's the right buzz.